Get started. Welcome everybody to the 24th Artisan of the Month, Robert Berger. And he's going to talk about all kinds of things that has led up to doing watercolors. So everyone welcome you. Thank you. Thanks everybody for coming. I really appreciate it. Very, very much to see you. Well, I'm Bob, and uh, I start to say, I'm Bob, this is my gallery. These are all original watercolors. <laughs> I say that a lot of times during the day. Anyway, um, I have been painting, I get this out front, 13 years. That's, that's when I actually started to paint. Been drawing most of my life, but never producing anything, let's say, worthwhile. Okay? Um, I would have liked to have brought something. At the age of four, I drew a train. Uh, I can't find the darn thing, or else I, because I would have loved for you to see it, but it wasn't bad. And I knew all the parts of the train, steam dome, sand dome, bell, whatever. And it was fun. <clears throat> I grew up, I was born in Chicago, grew up in Baltimore, Maryland. But each year I visited my dad on the train. So I, from the age of seven, I went by myself from Baltimore to Chicago. They don't do things like that anymore. Um, so I got, I got, got into this thing. I'll, it's this, I'll mention the trains later. That's why, I'm, that's why I'm doing this. But anyway, I grew up like a lot of kids. And yeah, I was the high school. Yeah, they got me to be one of the guys that drew the pictures to go in the, the uh, annual and that sort of thing, but I've never really been, been involved in art. And, um, are you doing the clicking? I'm doing the clicking. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, uh, you can see I got, I got <laughs> to Baltimore. My mom remarried uh, when I uh, was going into high school and we moved to a little town called Irwin, North Carolina. Still, no art, except that's where I at least did the, the annual for, for what we did. I mean, I'm going back on all this so you understand. I don't know anything about watercolor painting. And in fact, I had one of those, I think we all did, $1.72 or whatever, you know. The brush that immediately shed all of its bristles. <laughs> Still have one of those. I think. Any, so anyway, um, things rolled right along. I went in the Marine Corps after high school. Obviously, I didn't do anything artistic there. Um, after the Marine Corps, I went to the University of Richmond. And I majored in political science, had nothing to do with art. Graduated from the University of Richmond and went to work for the insurance company in North America, the old INA 1792 Philadelphia, you know, all the, the good things. And I stayed with them 18 years. And then went with a new company that was just starting in business and was with them the rest of my career. So I've only really made one major move like that. I retired, well, first of all, INA sent me to Tampa. Now, I finished college in Virginia. One of the other guys finished college in North Carolina. You see, Carolina is more south than Virginia, right? I get picked to come to Tampa, Florida. He went to Cleveland. <laughs> He's no longer with the company. I mean, like within a year, he's no longer with the company. So anyway, I said, Tampa? Well, I grew up as a kid on the west end of Baltimore. Only rich people could go to Florida. And aren't all the houses flamingo colored? I think they are. But anyway, only rich people. And here they're sending me there. Well, I get down there and I find out it's the cheap, next to Mississippi, it's the cheapest place in the country in which to live at the time. 1965. So I spent 41 years there. And three years before moving away, my wife and another woman in town 
conspired against me <laughs> to take watercolor lessons. To which, in my affirmative way, I said, why? Anyway, I took watercolor lessons with the other lady. The other lady, our friend, she'd been doing this a couple of years. And what the way the way I learned was this class wasn't for beginners, it was for anybody. And I wound up walking around the room instead of painting a whole lot, watching what the instructor was telling everybody. And I and then when I eventually later did my own thing. That came about, and that's the way I do my classes. Well, took watercolor lessons for three years and left beautiful downtown Tampa and came to Berea, Kentucky. Now, there's a lady in town who passed away two years ago, and I can't remember her name, and I'm so sorry. But she was a teacher at the college, and she walked with a cane, and she came in coffee and Nancy. tea. Was it Nancy? Clara. I know who you're talking Clara about. Clara Welch. No, not Clara. Sally. Oh. Sally. 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 <laughs> Sally. Bless her heart. She didn't know my name, but she'd point, and she'd say, you're the backward people. <laughs> because... We retired from Florida to Berea. My first, the first thing I did in Berea, now remember, now I'm painting three years. Fortunately, down there in Tampa, I started selling after one year. I started doing commissions. People like have their houses painted. <clears throat> they could have hired my wife. She would have painted the ha whole house. <laughs> they just wanted me to do a rendition type thing. But anyway, we decided to come here. We threw a dart at a map. That's how we got here. I did call a niece who went to EKU for her undergraduate work, and she said, Uncle Bob, I don't know anything about uh, Richmond. I said, well, you went to school here for four years, or there for four years. She says, yeah, I live in E-Town. I went home every week. And I said, okay. She says, but you might look south of there in a little town called Berea, because it's real artsy. So we come down here, we like what we saw, we put in for a house, and then I headed on the main street, and not even living here, I joined the Berea Arts Council. <laughs> Gwen's Sorry for that. From <laughs> and anyway, so we moved here. We moved here on May 1st of 06. And uh, the first thing I did was left my wife with 472 boxes to unpack. And I came up here because the community art show was starting that day. <laughs> where that was the turn-in day. Okay? So I, that was more important to me to unpack the boxes, as I'm sure you all... To which you all can attest. So, hi, come in. So, anyway, um, now what am I going to do? Well, you saw an earlier picture of me at a desk. That was in my house, and that's where I did, I did my that I did my painting out overlooking uh, the street, which which was fine. I had good light. It was everything was nice, and I did it that way for eight and a half years here. Well, I needed to get some things shown. The first thing I did was I was fortunate enough to start teaching uh, watercolor lessons in my home. One of my two students is sitting back there. And she's a, she's, she's a good watercolorist in her own right and, and sells like, like do I do. And in fact, she teaches. And she cannot blame that on me. So that, that, that didn't last us too long, did it? Anyway. You got me through the first painting. I got her through the first painting. You, you all heard that. So then I approached the Brie Arts Council. 
and they were good enough. We worked, we worked out some things. So I started teaching classes with them, and I taught a beginner's class. And the first person that shows up in my beginner's class is a woman by the name of Dinah Tyree. <laughs> One of the best watercolors in Madison County. I said, why do, you, well, why do you want to do this? She says, I just want to paint with somebody. Okay. My next person to sign up for that class was B.G. Baker. Do y'all you know B.G.? B.G.'s a watercolor artist in her own right. So it went on like that. So I, I figured, okay, how am I going to do this? That's when I thought back to Tampa. Okay? That's when I thought back to Tampa, and I said, that's what I'll do. So instead of just saying beginning class or intermediate class, we tried that both, didn't we? Now, anybody wants to come, come. So I've got people that can't paint, never saw, t I start to say toothbrush. <laughs> well, I'm in the right state for that anyway. Anyway, they... they, they <laughs> I shouldn't go there, should I? This is, this is on, never mind. This is on tape. Yeah, so anyway, um, you've got somebody's brand new sitting next to somebody who's been painting a long time, right? And guess what? It, it has worked out beautifully. I have, uh, in my classes, I have some people that are quite accomplished. We have some people. I encourage them to, to, to come into our community show each year, and, and we've been kind of successful with that. I have an 11-year-old, well, she's 12 now, girl been with me over a year, that grandma up in Maine insists that she keeps coming, so it's been great. I need to call her next week, tell her when in September. Oh, she's already signed up. She's already she signed, signed up. up. No, no, she right. saw the email and already signed up. Okay. So that's, that's kind of what I've been doing. Now, I had a big change occur last, the 1st of June last year. At the tender age of 77, I went into business. Donald Trump, I ain't. All right? I, I, I'm not going there. I mean, you, uh, anyway, I go into business. Uh, the, the, the tourism director came up to me knowing. I was with Suna Fredrickson in the old movie theater for five years. Five years, I went in there once a week. We didn't have any traffic. I sold six paintings in five years. Now, it's out of there, but I was in shows and we're doing things and down in, uh, did real well down in Stan uh, Stanford, uh, Kentucky and whatnot, but not, but not in there. Well, soon it decided it had to close, so uh, in April, here I am out of a home, and that's when the tourism director got hold of me and said, well, I've been trying to get you down here for years. And I said, I didn't know that. You need to tell somebody. So what she did is she offered me Doug Haley's spot where, and beautifully done, I have 600 square feet in the front at 119 North Broadway. The accelerator program with, with uh, the Berea graduates through the auspices of tourism, of Berea tourism, is in the end, other end of the building. And it's really worked out well. I'm, I've been there a year and a couple of months. And what I have uh, accomplished with it is I've had some sales. It's helped with my uh, teaching, but the big thing is I'm meeting people from all over the world. I had a man, a family in Friday, husband, wife, two teenage daughters, Jerusalem, they came from Israel. 
from all over, and this happens daily. I have, I, I'm in there by myself, I, it's just my art, and I asked a, a friend of mine, Bob Bagley, Bob, take a bow, um, <laughs> if he'd give me some pieces of his beautiful wood turnings, and we've sold a couple of pieces. So I, that just breaks breaks things up a little bit. Um, and I'm going to try to continue this way. Mm -hmm. I think the big thing that, that, that I could tell you about what I've tried to do is, in painting 13 years, starting your own business was really, really scary. Especially at my age. I've been retired since I was 60, uh, 61. And, it just, and just to start a new business from scratch was difficult. Now, tourism made it very easy on the rent and things like that. I already had a stockpile of paints. And my wife paints beautifully walls. So the place, <laughs> the place got painted. And, and you know, we've done, we've done pretty well in, in that respect. People will, they, though, what, one question I get from almost everybody who walks in the door is they'll, they'll say, um, you've traveled all these places? And yeah. Um, so did you, how did you do this or that? And then I have to tell them. All the pictures that I have, excuse me, all the paintings I have, that's representative of one, were from before I ever painted. What? Yeah, before I ever painted. All my pictures that are in my gallery are from photographs taken from 90 through 2002, and I started painting in 2003. And this is, this is, I think, a good example. My wife and I are walking down the street. This is 1991. My wife and I are walking down the street. I don't know if you're familiar with Florence, but we're on the side street behind the Uffizi Gallery. And we're walking toward the Arno River. <clears throat> and I looked to the right and saw that. Well, there's my picture. Just one snapshot. Had I been painting, I'd have probably taken 20 shots of this. And guess what? That's all I needed. Really? That's all I needed. So, I've done a lot of that. Now, I knew what this looked like. But I'm also obsessive compulsive. So, when I decided to paint it, I went on the internet, good old Google Earth, <laughs> and found out exactly where, where it was, because it's been a long time. The other example that I brought, this, then this is indicative of what I've done for almost all the landscapes, other than the local ones. The local ones, of course, were taken most, most recently. Now, I've been to all those places. I ain't never been here. <laughs> okay? My what? and I had a reason for bringing this one in deference to that one. This, of course, is one of the images from the Hubble Space Telescope. Uh, when the Hubble takes a picture, it's in black and white. It is mechanically and electronically changed to colors by the people at NASA. Or whoever is at NASA, I believe it is. So you get these beautiful colors. This is the way we would see it if we could see through their non-atmosphere type thing, okay? I painted this for a reason. 
If you come to my gallery, you'll see very tight paintings. I will never be invited into the National Watercolor Society nor the American Watercolor Society because they want to see a lot of the page left blank. They want to see where there's light on a roof, they just want to see the paper. They don't like the tightness that I do. Now everybody comes in, in our gallery says they like the tightness and that's what sells. So I keep doing it. I mean why should I change when people say no I kind of like that difference. I would like though if I can't get loose I'd like to get the experience of looseness. For instance I don't dare do abstracts because, well, I was, back when I was in college, I went to this thing, and it was a showing there, this young, young woman, a girl my age, and I said, well, well that's not abstract number 14, that's number 47, there's abstract, no, abstract number 3. She just numbered them all, I, could, I didn't know what was what. I have never... I've never been exposed to the teaching and the learning that you would get with, uh, let's say, majoring in fine arts. So I don't know anything about that type of painting. But that I can copy. And I can add certain things to it. It took me two weeks to paint this. Okay? I think. I think it was about two weeks. This one I just finished recently. It took four months. It has, in some places, 15 to 20 washes, thin washes of paint, just trying to capture the actual colors. Okay? I've done six of these. I have four, four of them still. <clears throat> I just wanted to show you that I'm trying to break out <laughs> of this <laughs> shell. <laughs> Some years ago, I was uh, I had applied <clears throat> to the Kentucky Guild Arts and Craftsmen, and I was turned down. They said I should study perspective. I didn't tell them that I started studying perspective in the ninth grade in mechanical drawing <laughs> classes, and that's all I did. Unfortunately, the painting I gave them to review was. The Goat Barn up on Tater Knob that Sarah Colbert owns. Unfortunately, the picture and the building go out on an angle. So consequently, I don't care what you do, it's not going to look in perspective. I don't do that anymore. I, don't, I make sure pictures I send to somebody are very whatever. So that's where I am. I've been given a great spot. I have new awnings on our building. I'm very pleased with everything. And in fact, you cannot see all of it here, but how many of some of you have seen the mural on the side wall and then the one piece in the front? Uh, that's done because that particular um, Huh? Wasn't it commissioned? Yes. It was commissioned by the city. Yeah. Yes. It, it, no, yes, but it didn't cost the city anything. It, there was no cost. What it is, these are all endangered, endangered plants. Yeah. The reason we got this one is because the uh, there's some of it near here. <laughs> Nobody will tell you where, though, because they're afraid they'll get picked. They're only in a few counties in North Carolina, a couple of counties in South Carolina, and some here. <clears throat> it's called the white fringe fringeless. Yeah, the white fringeless. Uh, whatever it is. Is it an orchid? An orchid. Thank, thank you. Oh, I appreciate that. The white fringeless orchid. 
I'll give you the Latin name if you give me ten minutes. All right. <laughs> anyway, I'm very happy with all of this. Can I answer things for you? Yes. I don't have a question. I want to. While you're on this, I want to tell you, this lovely lady and I got on the trolley yesterday morning to go on the tour. I hope you don't mind me telling. And um, and I said to the driver, it was impromptu. We we hadn't planned it. We were just out in old town and had uh, to kill. And so I said to the driver, tell me something about the Rhea. I don't know. I kind of say it jovially, you know, really not, but as we're getting on. So anyhow, when we were, drove past your place, he mentioned your name, he talks about your lovely watercolor. So you have the champion, you know, all the yeah, time Roger. telling people. Yes, I appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate him very much. Uh, so Roger, uh, I can't pay you. <laughs> I haven't sold anything this month but three sets of cards. I can't pay you. Anyway, yes, he's a he's a saint. He really is. He's, and, a, and a wealth of information. Yes, and, and, he, and really well. he goes by, now my job, I have a job with that now. He stops his thing right in front of my place. And I'm sitting there painting, and I have to stop, and I wave at everybody. <laughs> 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 there's a real live artist right there. You can see his face. This is pre-set-up. No, it just, no, of it, Roger. no he slows he's, down, and you wave. He slows down, and, and I wave, and I wave, and he stays there. And I'm still waving, and Roger, my arm. Come on, man. <laughs> anyway, it's wonderful. And guess what? About an hour later, a couple of people off of that trolley will come in. Now this is going on, not with me, this is going on all over town, isn't it? As yeah. it goes around. Yeah. So, it's really a great thing. I'm very thankful. I'm thankful to God and a whole bunch of people. <laughs> but I'm especially thankful in this regard to the Berea Arts Council, first, and Berea Tourism. For what, for what they've done to help me. I, I've, only, I've only worked for huge corporations, a couple of very, very large corporations, of which I wasn't even a cog on the wheel. I was spit off down there somewhere. <laughs> I've never been a manager because I've been a technician my whole, my whole career. Um, this is interesting. Uh, going back to work at the age I did, 77, is really interesting. I take Tuesdays and Wednesdays off. I can't wait for Thursday morning. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of fun. Does anybody have anything they'd like to talk about? Well, I just have a question. Because of the tightness of your painting, it's something like, I've never asked you, I was wondering. Usually when you see tightness, it's usually in another medium, uh, uh, oil or acrylic. It seems like, mm -hmm. did you think about, well, maybe I should do that, or did you just have too much oh, oil thought, watercolor? No. Did you hear what she said? Ask. She asked, had I thought about being loose with watercolor, that acrylic and Oil paintings are usually the ones you see where things are tightly done. Yes, I thought about it. I have started, half of my paintings started very loose work. And then they tighten up. <laughs> to, and, and that teacher I told you about in Florida, where I started, she tried the first two years. I was there three years. She tried the first two years to get me to, to loosen up. Finally, she just said, she just gave up. I do paint some things loosely. I just finished a painting of, and it's one I had done seven years ago. It was a commission for a swinging bridge and property in Estill County. Um, I did it for the uh, somebody that was going to give it as a gift to the, uh, the owner of the property. And uh, I just repainted it, literally, fr I framed it two weeks ago. Uh, in a winter scene, I just turned it to winter. <clears throat> the whole background, the hills that are behind this farm are still loose. 
I'm very proud of that. <laughs> so I've got a big screen that's got um, a couple of your paintings on it. I'm just going to go back here. And talk about crap here. This one. That church is in Stanford. And um, how many of you know Janice Carr? That she's been in my classes? Uh, Janice took this picture. Look at the sun. Now this, can you, oh, yeah. you can hold that? Yeah. Okay. This, this painting, can I borrow your strobe? The, the pointer? Yeah. Okay. Where is it? The red dot. Oh, the red dot. <laughs> <Yeah>. Makes sense. <laughs> uh, in a painting of this size, you have four, and they're called all different names, spots of gold, <laughs> points of gold, but areas that... If you can put something in it, you should. Something in particular. In this painting, it would be there, 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 <laughs> and about there. You can't get that back, can yeah, you? Yeah, you can. There's a, the back arrow button. Keep going. One more. One more. There. Okay. Okay. Now, now just hit the red thing. Just hit the red Nothing thing. else. And about there. Okay? So, oh, I look where the sun is. I couldn't, didn't, if, if I put the sun up here, I lose the whole effect of the painting. Okay? So, I left the sun alone. Well, I'm not going to dirty that up. I'm not going to dirty that up. And I don't put telephone lines in paintings. Well, I did. <laughs> Look at this. This, well, first of all, this is no longer a commission. It's no longer in commission church. It's an old Methodist church. It was at one time. Anyway, look at this old old line work. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. The old telephone line coming down. I like that, so I left it in. Then I put that one back in because there's a golden spot. So I put cardinal, a family of cardinals on it. Mm -hmm. And one thing I teach the, the folks in classes is how many birds do you put flying? How many cows in a field? Three. How many? Three. Or, or one. odd numbers. Yes, you use odd numbers. So the student in the class says, why? And I say, I don't know. <laughs> I, I really... Psychologically, it does it. So, there's Papa and Mama, so I had to add a baby. <laughs> but, this, uh, this was a beautiful photograph. It was done by a lady who just, it's a snapshot. Mm -hmm. But look what she called. So that's a little bit, and I try to teach where to put some things. You never have the horizon in the center of the, here it makes not much difference, but you never have the horizon sun. Your main subject is never in the middle. Well, I know that almost is in the middle, but look. That's there. Do I have any questions? Have you ever used any other kind of paints? Acrylic or oil? Have you tried them? Yeah, I tried acrylics. 40 years ago and something. I didn't know what I was doing. I just stopped. But no desire to experiment? Outside no, of I didn't want to start watercolor classes. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> so the acrylics were before the watercolor. Yeah, but notice I said I've never painted it. Because I really, I, I don't even count it. It was, yeah. it was. Most people move from watercolors to acrylics and oils, or especially oils. And I think this is the way, could somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is the way fine arts are taught in colleges. That 
they use the watercolor to make a cartoon. Now, by cartoon, I'm not talking about a funny, but a, what we call a cartoon, a, of a forerunner of something. And then from that cartoon, they then work in their, in their medium, mostly oils. When I went to school, it was the other way around. They started with drawing and then to oil painting and then, and then watercolor. That's because you're younger. <laughs> did you hear what he said? <clears throat> what did you it, plan to do with your retirement before you started painting? What did you thought you would do? Did you think you'd still come up north to Berea or would you have stayed in Florida? Or did you have a plan? What was our plan? <laughs> she and she wanted to know, had I not started painting, what would I have been doing in retirement? I, was, I retired in 2000, started painting in 2003, so it was basically two and a half to three years later. Um, actually, three and a half years later. I, um, at the time, and don't you all laugh, I was a runner. Um, at, the, at, at the age of 54, 55, I ran, I took a fourth place in a 5K race, that's 3.1 miles. Two weeks later, I took third place at University of South Florida in a 10K. And then two weeks after that, I did a, to me a big deal, I did a two-hour half marathon. So I quit running and quit <laughs> drinking at the same time, and this happened. <laughs> Started eating. Well, your knees happened too. Your oh, yeah, I, happened. yes, and another. Yeah, I've had many knee replacements. Only two knees, but five <laughs> knee replacements. So, but I'm actually, I'm in decent shape for considering. And what it allows me to do is run that little business. I do not, would not encourage any of you, since you all are so much younger than I am, I would not encourage any of you to do what I did if you wanted to do it for an income. I'm lucky to break even. One of the reasons I break even is because of my classes with the Brie Arts Council and the Learn Shops. Now, in the Learn Shops, I can't teach you to do anything with painting in one day. But I can teach you my four-week class broken down to a full day for calligraphy. And I do, I do a lot of calligraphy commissions. Yeah, there's, that's just a quick piece there. So um, do they actually make the, the, the card and the calligraphy in your class? No. The same class as in classes? Learn Shops, it's just calligraphy. And it runs all day long. You start with the early stuff and bring it forward. This was done in the um, make it, take it, break give it. it. I call it break it. Yeah, that's what I used to. And it, unless you're a glass thrower or in ceramics, then it's make it, take it, break it. Um, <laughs> at Christmas time. The whole idea is you come to a class, half day or day usually, and you make something and take it home. The, the most successful I've seen are the jewelry classes that, that, a, that a few people, have. there was a bunch of them going on during that time. So they asked me, Dinah Tyree said, I can't do this any longer. I'm not going to be here. I'm going to Florida. <laughs> you go right ahead. But she said, why don't you take my class, please? I said, what am I going to do? In a, in a half day, she ta teaches people how to do something in watercolor. I think I can't do that. So I said, okay. So I signed up and took, or had, a one-day class. And in the morning, that's what they painted. That's painted with three colors of paint. It's painted with ultramarine blue. Cadmium red medium and um, 
I forget which, I think REO and, or a middle, a middle of the road yellow. And that's what we painted. So it taught the folks a little bit about mixing color. It got them to actually paint a painting. Then in the afternoon, that's what we did, things like this. And what I did is gave now my four-week course down to a full day is now down to a half day. But to get help, help, you know, just enough calligraphy. My calligraphy class is based on the idea of you being able to go home and write a nice note to a friend. Something to that effect. And you need to know all the old alphabets in order to do that. Let me mention about color, please, if I may. For the last six years, I've really been studying color, trying to learn everything I can learn about color. Um, that's why, I guess, I can take those three basic primaries and come to you and say, this is what we can do with these. In this month's Watercolor, uh, watercolor Artist Magazine, there's an article by a guy that still swears, I only need 12 tubes of paint, and I can do anything with them. I don't agree with him, but I understand his point, that you can mix enough to, do, to make some nice watercolors. Now, he doesn't. <laughs> he's got a ton of this stuff, like I do. But, he's, but what he's saying, he's trying to make a point with newer people. So I, I understand that. And uh, in working with color, you can do so many things. I, have, I don't have many oranges. I have four oranges. It's orange paint, not, uh, not you, you, know, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> I have four oranges, but guess what? Dang dumb, I needed that other one. So I had to order this other one because it just did something the others didn't. And I couldn't take yellows and reds to hit that. So I bought a two. I do that a lot. I have about 190 to 205, this is somewhere in there, tubes of all artist paint, not student grade, all artist or professional, they use both terms, paint. And guess what? I'm mixing paint all the time. Even with those, I'm mixing paint all the time. Very seldom do I take something straight out of a tube and use it. What I do is mostly for skies. There's a couple of different blues and violets that, that I can do that with. But with all those tubes of paint, this is why I'm only breaking even with my business. You understand? You understand that? Okay. But with all those tubes of paint, I'm still mixing constantly, all the time. I don't use black paint. I mix all my own blacks. Um... I do use white paint. Don't tell that to anyone. And that's not to be published. I don't use white, I mean, I do use white paint. I'll use a touch of white paint for a, a glare off of glasses or an eye or something like that. And it's, and it's very effective. Well. But the white in your snow scenes, that washes? The white in my snow scenes, yeah. Um, this is a good, now this, I can't remember where the sun was here, what sun there was. But in that, may I again? I'll, I'll press the right button on this, I promise. Let's say the sun's over here, coming this way. I use basically two colors for most things. If it's cool, I use ultramarine blue. If it's warm, I use cadmium red medium. Okay? Cadmium red's too sharp. I use the medium. So on a painting like this, all of this would be blue. That would be blue. That would be red, just coming up there. And of course, they blend right in. 
And believe me, it's like magic. And it's 1% paint and 9% water. You know, you very, just a light wash on it. And like I say, blending the red a little bit in, 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 into the blue. Have you ever tried gouache? Have I ever tried gouache? Yes. I have no. <laughs> well, no, I I had I have a tube of Windsor and Newton's white gouache. Um I only use it when titanium white watercolor paint just won't cover some little thing I want to do. No, I, other than that, I don't use it. You know why I don't? I'm old school. On the back of my paintings, I put the title, anything else I want, my name, and then the way you look at it, over here it says watercolor, and over there it says the date. If I use a touch of ink, which I really don't do, or gouache, I then call it mixed media. Technically, I'm told I don't have to. But I really try to stay with, if I write the word watercolor, I try to stay in the medium totally. Now, that doesn't go for signing your name. I'll just pick up anything to, you know, sign them. <laughs> Whatever. I don't believe that. What? <laughs> <laughs> Bob's is. That's what you want, Liz. Yeah, what is that? That is white watercolor. Now, I have to tell you, though, my last student, my last class, this, one of the students, and that's a story in itself, one of the students um, brought me a gel pen. I'd never seen one. My 12-year-old, she said, oh yeah, I've got a few of those. <laughs> of course, they can do anything. I also looked to her to show me how to do things on my iPhone. But anyway, um, uh, she, a gel pen would do this nicely. See, a light name on a dark, can you see that? Would do that nicely. But no, that's watercolor. That's watercolor. I didn't know that. I always thought you had. I always thought you were using gel pens. Mm -hmm. No idea that was one color in your name. Mm -hmm. Bob, since your your colors are dense, uh, do you start with a pencil? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Ninety nine percent of my paintings are drawn first. Um. I get heavy-handed, um, and sometimes what I'll do is, after I've drawn a thing, I'll take a Moo eraser, don't you lay it, M-O-O, -O. it's the finest erasing product I've ever seen. It's been on the market about two years now. But I'll take a Moo eraser, <laughs> or get rid of most of it, because I get too heavy-handed sometimes. But yes, I draw first. I have used a gray, I make up a gray by a little bit of violet and a little bit of yellow. Make a gray, a thin gray, and paint it on. And that works real well if you have to see something from a distance. If you really, you know, want to get off and see your perspective or something, it, that, that works better than the real fine pencil line. Like, but I, yeah, I do that all the time. Do you underpaint the dark first? depending on the painting. This one I did not. Can't tell there. But do you, do you know what she, she means? Is, uh, all right, the one I'm doing now, I'm doing, I'm doing a scene now, and it's a railroad scene. I'll explain that before, before we go home too. The, I'll have I did a value sketch. Now, value sketch is you lay out light, dark, and medium colors. You can do it with a pencil. So you say, oh, yeah, okay, I have to pick that up, and I have to put that over there. And the two, 
will clash, so I can't do that. So you're just looking at, at, at an overview. Well, when I get to paint it, my darks will be the dark, the cast shadow, or whatever it is, of whatever that thing is. If it's a building, then it'll be the same color as the building. And here's the problem. The building's white. White painted. So I take anything around it. Ah, the sky. So I'll take my blue of the sky and the, the, the across the color wheel from blue is what? Orange. So I'll start adding orange to it until I gray it down. And I'll color those in. Then it's when I come back, I'll add blue, more blue to it after it's dry. Add more blue to it. And what I'll have is, oh, that's that white building, but that's in a shadow. That's what I do. Yes, ma'am. Are you planning on a reception, or have I missed it? Opening to your new studio? <laughs> and we can put it's it in the newspaper. Yeah. You know, the newspapers want to know that stuff. I opened a year and a half ago. I mean, a year and a three months ago. I you haven't had a party yet. No. Oh, no. no. I. Where's the town? The party here. We're party people. You know that. We're party people. She wants a party. <laughs> Maybe, she she host host that party. Huh? Maybe she would host us that party for you. Yeah. Would you host us that party? I would. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk. We'll talk. Okay. All right. <laughs> I actually, that, that was a consideration. Leslie, she hits my wife. She hits me. She says, Bobby, can I have some punchy cookies type things? I said, well, it ain't going to be punch. But anyway, it, I, 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 we'll do we'll this. Now, wait a minute. Wait, let me explain, please. I'm an Episcopalian. Wherever you find four of us, you'll find a fifth. <laughs> anyway, a anyway, that's very old. Anyway, uh, I, I, I told her, now I'll get serious for just a second. I told her, that's okay. I told her that I really don't want to do that. Now, I can stand here and talk to you in front of you all, and we can make jokes and do things like that, but I actually don't like blowing a horn a whole lot. I really, really don't. I, you, know, you change as you get older. At the age of 30, I would have been standing on here telling you how <laughs> wonderful I am, especially if you were a 29-year-old girl. <laughs> but... It, it, I just, no, I just didn't want to. I didn't, didn't want to. You could think of that as a marketing tool, though. Yeah. Well, I know. <laughs> You're in business. Yes. Be a future conversation. Right. Future conversation. Future conversation. Future conversation. We'll talk with us. Yeah. Folks, I have been with you all for almost an hour. Oh, it's about the railroad. Yes. Huh? The railroad, you say. You said, I'm here at the end to hear your last questions. Uh, sit down. Just say it goodbye. Tell me what's going on. You have great paintings. Well, did you hear her? I have great paintings. Yeah. <clears throat> Wait, he paid you? Yeah. <laughs> the plan? Afterwards, afterwards. Um. My trains, yeah, I mentioned my trains and right before we leave. Um, I got into painting trains because of that one I did when I was four years old that I can't find. And I grew up on trains, so I guess this was a, a, natural, a natural thing. Uh, I painted a half a dozen train pictures to take to West Lakota, I think that's the name of it, high school for the Cincinnati uh, train model railroad, whatever they are, to their show. And uh, I was the belle of the ball. <laughs> the only fine artist that had ever showed up at one of their train shows. This is a big train show. Can I get you anything? 
because I literally, I took eight paintings. I said six, but I had to add a couple. I took eight train paintings and put them on easels like this and sat there. Now, the advantage to this is all the shows I do, it's either 90 degrees out, like out there, right? Or it's raining and the tent is leaking. And I do watercolors. <laughs> you don't want to leak in tents. Doesn't work. So anyway, um, this is great. I'm sitting there in West Lakota High School in this beautiful air-conditioned space. And instead of $300 admission that I'm having to pay, I'm paying $20 for the table and chicken. I didn't sell a thing. Didn't sell a thing. So... They came over, you know, can I get you anything? You want some coffee? You want a drink? Yeah, no, thank you. I want somebody to buy something. <laughs> <laughs> that got me started. So anyway, here, and then I'll end with this. The, uh, Todd Finley is the new manager at the Artisan Center. And he and Gwen Hefner came to my place. And uh, they took six of my paintings. All of them are sold. Oh, because people visit there that don't normally come around. And then finally, I've had two ladies in, young ladies, who are in the business. They came separately, two weeks apart or something like that. But they just happen to be in and they sell. I'm sorry. They're in the business. Museum type business, the art purchasing business, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And at the end of my gallery, I have a painting. It's this big, and it's a back alley of Tallinn, Estonia. And I have it. My wife framed it. I didn't in museum glass. The piece of glass cost eighty dollars. Just the piece of glass. And she did a beautiful job framing it. I think we have a million two in it now. <laughs> anyway, the woman, I have $500 on this little painting. The price is going to go up. I am going to change something. But the one woman told me, you should not have anything less than 1250 on this, as it sits right now. And I said, ma'am, <laughs> this is Berea, Kentucky. <laughs> she said, oh. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.